So last time I talked about a technique I like to use called procedural painting. Basically where you can paint procedural textures in order to add another layer of control to your models. However, this week I want to talk about a simple concept called texture stacking. Essentially, it is taking multiple textures and dropping them on top of each other in order to create new textures. So yeah, let's use this simple arch for example. This is the actual texture that I have downloaded with the arch. It is a pretty much plain white texture with a little tiny amount of grave and darker values in it. It's very plain and it works well if you're going for a clean arch or a clean wall. However, if you're going for something a bit grungier, a bit more worn down, then this isn't going to work. And a lot of times it's hard to find on the internet just a texture that is going to work well in this scenario. So an easy way to basically make a texture look the way you want it is by texture stacking. And texture stacking is a very simple process. What I'm going to do is first, I'm just going to duplicate my image texture and find a new one that I like. Now, generally, I like to use something like texturer.com, which basically gives you textures that aren't seamless. And I find that non-seamless textures work a lot better in this scenario than seamless textures work. So for example, let's use this concrete texture right here. There you go, as you can see, that is our texture. Now, let's map it a little bit better onto the rest of the texture. So I'm gonna move it down until it's about to here. And now we have this little top bit right there. Maybe I'll also scale it a little bit more on the y-axis just so it's a little bit less stretched and there we go we get a texture like this now one way you can do it is just add a mix color node and then you can plug your original texture into the a value plug your new texture into the b value and then mix them by a slight amount and already that looks a little bit better obviously we can switch between the two completely so we have either fully the grungy concrete wall texture or the plain plaster wall but another way to do this and if you've seen the previous video you'll understand this concept is you can create your own custom masks by adding in a color ramp and then plugging one of your textures into that color ramp so now we have this, and that would be our mask, which we can now drag the black and white values closer together and plug this color ramp into our factor, and that will now decide the mix between A and B. So as you can see, we have it backwards, but now our plaster texture is the black texture, and the white texture is our grungy concrete texture. So all we have to do is flip these textures like this, and we can then mix these two textures together based on this factor. So now already, I have a much more interesting texture. Now using the mapping coordinates, I can move these over so that they mix a little bit better with the rest of everything, and that looks better. There's a lot less of a noticeable seam between the two of these areas. I can also move these up so I have less cracks, but overall, that looks a lot better already. Now, what I generally like to do is stack two or three textures on top of each other. So what we can do is the exact same concept, add another mix node, let's grab a new image texture, and I'm gonna go with something like this grungy concrete wall. We're gonna mix it into the B value. And for this one, I may just go about it by mixing in the color itself so that we get something like this. Now, once again, I wanna play around with maybe the rotation, uh, but also play around with its location so that I can try and maybe get rid of the obvious seams. So in this case, I'm gonna flip the rotation of this by 90 degrees. And there we go, that gets rid of most of our obvious seam that we have. I can play around with the mix on these two so that I either have it very grungy or only a little bit grungy. And in truth, I may wanna do this before this mix color, and I will. So I'm just gonna mix these two together. My original color and this new grungier color are gonna be mixed together before they get mixed with this concrete right here. And the reason for that is simply because I want to overlay this as my top result. And if I do it the other way around, then this part is going to be overlaid on top of the other. Now, finally, I could add even more. Let's just grab one more new image texture, add another mix color node, plug the new image texture into the bottom, and let's go find a texture that we like. Personally, I like this one. So here's this texture. Already it looks mapped pretty well onto uh, the model. I can pull right there, and if I do this, obviously it turns into one full texture. But if I plug my new image texture through a color ramp and then plug it into the mix factor, I can then mix the two of these together and create a subtle mask like this, which then allows me to have two different textures mixed in. So using this technique, we have gone from a wall like this to a wall like this. 
And though it's generally not what you're supposed to do, we can plug this into a bump node, this final mix color node into the height of a bump node, and plug it into here. And as long as we play with the strength of the bump and the distance, we can get something that looks a little bit more natural. And it'll incorporate these new textures into the actual bump of the wall. So it's a super simple concept. As you can see, it's what I did here. And it just kind of adds a lot to the overall texture of this area. Now, another thing I have used it for is making stuff like mosaics. So if I duplicate this material, and let's just check it out. Without anything on here, this is what my texture looks like. That is the original texture that I used to make this. However, this is not very mosaic-like. So one thing you can do is add a color ramp. And I gave this kind of a brownish color like this. Next, I added another mixed color node, added in a new image texture, and just chose something significantly grungy like this texture we chose before. Then I can plug it in over top and we can mix the two together like this, turn up the roughness if I want, and already that looks like it's more ingrained with the rest of the wall. And then finally, I just stacked over a tiling texture. So if I go to my floor and I go find a normal map, say this one, this pavement medieval floor normal map, I can plug this into a normal map, set it to non-color so that it works properly and plug it into the normal. If we turn up the strength, you can now see it coming through. Next, I can just change this scale to something like five and I can change my Y scale so that it's a bit more square. And there we go. Now, finally, what I did is added another mixed color node. And then if I can find this original image texture, so it's medieval pavement, let's go find it. And it appears to be this one. I can plug this color into this color. Then using a color ramp, change the factor between these two. First, I want to make sure that these are tiled properly. So I'll plug it into the same mapping coordinates that I have my normal map plugged into. And if I bring these back I can then multiply these two colors on top of each other to make those grooves stand out a bit more using some ambient occlusion. I want to keep this effect rather subtle, and I'll bring this down to something like two. And there we go. As you can see, we have a quick mosaic that we can just drop anywhere in the scene and uh, make just an interesting style. Now it's a little darker than the rest of our scene, so I can just use a uh, RGB curve to bring up the value a little bit, and then it will mix a little bit better with the rest of the scene. Anyway, this is once again a technique that I use pretty often. As you can see, I've used it all over this place. I've made these mosaics into kind of a brick mosaic. These walls are just little vaulted areas that have these grungy bits attached to them to help them blend in with the rest of the ceiling. These pillars down here use uh, basically the same thing I showed in the last video, that procedural painting sort of thing, where it's using pointiness uh, from a ge geometry node and then plugged into a mix factor and then I'm mixing a bunch of different textures in together to make this stand out a little bit more. Uh, without that, this is what it looks like. Same thing over here, all of these little normal map pieces uh, with the pillars are mixed in. Uh, I've got some grunge as well riding down some of these areas. Once again, that's just stacking textures on top of each other. So it's a great way to add interest to any scene, and uh, it can really help integrate everything with each other. These floors, once again, the corners are just a separate image texture mixed in with the rest of everything else. And as you can see, when it turns just straight from floor to wall, it looks a little strange. But if we bring that in, we have a little bit more interest where everything kind of meets and it gets a little bit grungier on the corners. So anyway, if you like the tutorial, please subscribe and consider sharing it with some people. Uh, leave a comment as well on what you want to see next. And if you want to see some more tutorials on texturing and painting and just a whole bunch of stuff, go over to my Patreon. I've got a bunch of tutorials over there on scene breakdowns, texturing, and more. I also have a Gumroad where I sell assets, uh, some of which are free. And uh, you can check those out. A lot of them have to do with texturing and just uh, procedural workflow stuff.